Hey, in case you're wondering how I uh, package uh, beers to go, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing a box, so I figured I'd make a quick video. I'm sending off 13 beers to, uh, well, usually to England, but I'll be sending them off to uh, someplace in the United States for a secondary proxy, which happens all the time. Um, you know, so I've got a bottle. These are a uh, 500 milliliter bottle. And this works pretty much for any size bottle. Um, the first thing you want to determine whether it's got a wax top or no wax top. Uh, if you have a wax top, then you really don't have to go through the step. But the uh, basic uh, materials you're going to need for successful proxy shipping to make sure you don't lose any bottles um, is uh, number one, some electrical tape, uh, black or white. Very cheap. Get the cheapest one you can. You want to get yourself a nice big roll of uh, small bubble wrap. You can get this at Walmart, uh, online, Uline, anything like that. They come in big rolls, cost like 20 bucks for a big roll of it, and you'll use, you know, like one sheet of this per bottle. Um, you want to get yourself, go to Aldi's if you have an Aldi's or a Lytle or something, they have these uh, storage bags. You can get the gallon size. You must have to get the gallons. This is good for every beer except for uh, 750s. Um, the big champagne type bottles they don't quite fit in here, so you kind of have to figure it out. But most every bottle you're going to get is going to be either a 375, 500 milliliter, or a bomber, which is 22 ounces. So you want to make sure that uh, you get uh, at least some of these gallon storage bags. I get the 40. Uh, lately because I just want to prevent leaking. I don't care about anything else. Um, these freezer bags are a little bit thicker. So, you know, I'll, you know, these are $1.69 uh, for 40 of them at Aldi. So, and, um, so you got the bubble wrap, you got your thing, you got this and get yourself a big old bag of, um, rubber bands. Uh, they don't have to be really expensive. They sell them in Office Depot, lots of different places, Walmart, get a big bag of them and the reason you use rubber bands is to go ahead and hold the bubble wrap on and uh, the person you're sending it to is generally going to be another proxy or somebody that's sending beer or trading beer so they'll be able to continue to use your bubble wrap and uh, recycle if you put tape on it needless to say when you take the tape off bubble wrap sometimes it rips so just being conscientious um, that kind of stuff so anyway so we're going to get this one bottle I'll give you one quick demonstration you get the bottle this is, an, again, only on non-wax. Uh, I've got a bottle here that has a wax top. You do not have to do this step because this is already doing what we're doing, which is giving just one extra layer of protection for uh, the shipper. And when you pick up a lot of bottles, you'll usually get a box that looks like this that they, uh, they come in. I'm actually shipping one out here. So this is, you know, the boxes that the breweries generally give you if you're picking up multiple bottles, uh, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight bottles, they'll give you the box that the actual bottles come in, and those are ideal to use. Um, you know, boxes, you're gonna have to get, you know, figure out which works best for you. I like free, because when you're doing proxy, you try to spend as little as possible on shipping materials. The US Postal Service, if you're shipping in the United States, this, medium size flat rate box on pirate ship is $13.75 to just about anywhere in the country and you can fit four bottles of any size right in there even after you bubble wrap them nice it's nice and snug the best thing you can do is to make sure there's absolutely zero movement inside your box and um, you know pack them as tightly as you can the best way I can describe it is imagine you just spent $70 on a bottle of beer and you're about to spend another 13 to send it How would you want the person sending that beer that you just spent $70 on to pack it for you? That's it um, So these and all of the boxes you can actually order on USPS.com They'll send you a big pack of 10 or 20 of them for free or you can go to your local post office Pick up as many as you can they have uh, you'd want to stick with the medium and large boxes small boxes are useless but for weight and price um, and ability to send up to four bottles of any size nicely packed this is your baby all right so that's uh, pretty much it I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one real quick just so you can see and then uh, you know the rest is basically just you know trial and error making sure that 
again, that you're conscientious, takes a little extra time and effort. Um, I'm not doing this much anymore, but at one point when I was really doing a lot of proxy, I had like a little shipping station set up in my house, a little corner. And once you start to get the motion down, uh, it starts to become pretty quick, especially if you're dealing with the same people. Um, so anyway, so I've taken a Three Sons bottle of the Chonconox Aquino I picked up like two months ago for somebody. And I've just wrapped it, you know, around the top. Now this is just in case there's some pressurization or there's a little bit of a loose top or anything. This is just one little extra layer of protection to try to prevent the uh, leak, which is the kiss of death. Like, cause if you do not wrap it and you do not put it in plastic and one of these bottles cracks and leaks through the box, the post office is gonna shut it down. The UPS is gonna shut it down. FedEx is gonna shut it down, will not deliver it. Um, so at least if you have a bottle of 12 or 12, you know, different bottles that you're sending out, eight, whatever it is, uh, if you individually do this on every single one, if one breaks, goes into the bag, it doesn't leak, the rest of the beer still make it, right? Then I take one of the strips of the bubble wrap. I usually do the bubble wrap. Depends on the beer, actually. On smaller bottles, I do the bubble wrap first. The larger bottle, sometimes you'll have to put it in the bag first and then bubble wrap it. You're gonna have to figure that out as you go. But anyway, I take one of these, they're perforated, right? So you just take one piece, I wrap it in bubble wrap, and this is just for, of course, protection for shock. And I'll take a rubber band, again, wrap it around, boom, that secures it in place. You know, wrap this nice. Boom. Secure it in place. Boom. Then I take one of my bags. Ooh. Garbage bag. Or freezer bag. Well, this freezer bag is the best because they fit up to, like I said, almost every beer except the 750. Pitch in there real nice. Kind of wrap it up. Get the air out. Seal it up. If this bottle breaks it will not leak in the box. So that is the main goal. So I would recommend that every beer you send, that this is the method that you use to pack every single bottle. And then um, then you stack them nicely. I'll just not going through too much, but here's the box I'm gonna be sending these in. And I will just go ahead and start stacking them in here. And also I'll use, depending on the situation, you can use, uh, extra cardboard lining the box. Um, again, anything to do to prevent any sort of shifting movement. You also don't want your bottle sloshing around. Uh, a lot of people will send boxes that are apparently no doubt liquid. You're not really supposed to send beer in the mail at the moment, for the most part. Um, if they ask you, if you have ever get into a point where they ask you what's in it, just say it's olive oil. Um, imported olive oil, local jellies, jams, anything like that. Usually when you get a label sent to you, they're not gonna ask you. They just take the box, they scan it, give you the receipt, and you're on your way. But again, your job as a proxy is to not only pick up the beer, which is the easy part, but to go ahead and make sure that it safely gets to your customer. So that's it, so you put this in. Um, a lot of times you'll also get these dividers in with these boxes they're great because you can go ahead and put your bottles in and then you kind of use these as little buffers in between the bottles um, and then uh, pack it up tight on some larger shipments i will use not only the box especially international uh, because you have to pretend like every shipment is going to be dropped off the loading dock, right? That's kind of the way I pack. Like, what is the worst situation could possibly happen? Some idiot along the way between here and Canada or here and wherever um, mishandles these boxes. I mean, they're not gentle with them. So you want to make sure that you're conscientiously trying to prevent as much shock and movement as possible. But I'll usually bigger, I'll get a bigger box. And then this box, you put the beer in, and then you go ahead and stick it in the bigger box, like that. This one's perfect. It's right in there. And now, not only do I have a great non-moving uh, 
box where all the beer is. I can also put stuff around the side here, extra cardboard. Uh, I would use free materials. Like I said, you got all these cardboard boxes from uh, the post office. I break them up, stick them around, and then this, if you're sending international, it's pretty much foolproof. Um, I've never lost a bottle, and I hope I never do. So, anyway, that is uh, the short uh, tutorial. It's not as short as I thought it was going to be, but uh, if you have any other questions, I just figured I'd make this video and uh, try to help you along. And uh, good luck in uh, your proxy, and uh, Happy New Year.